Why'd they slow down? Ah! Hi, I'm Kat, and this is my journey through the Silk Road. When I first thought of the Silk Road, I thought back to the old videos that were shown in school. In many parts, pack animals are used both for riding as well as transporting all kinds of material. In the far north and northwest, camels are also used in the winter. During the hot summer months, the Gobi Desert affords scanty grazing. You know there's a certain condescension in the look of a camel that makes a mere human being feel very inferior. The Silk Road sounded exciting, almost like something out of an adventure book. If you're looking for the cliché story of a wandering white girl finding herself and dragging her Western culture through China, you've come to the wrong place. This is the story of how I've been severely and utterly humbled by the uniqueness of the Silk Road. It's the story of the people I interacted with and how they're some of the most warmest and welcoming people I've met. This is my journey through three different cities along the Silk Road. Each city has its own unique personality, story, and peoples. So, come aboard my friend and welcome to the 21st Century Silk Road. It was just a short bus journey from the airport to the city. And before we knew it, we were in the metropolis. Alongside the Yellow River, the metropolis is a beacon of modern civilization. From up on a mountain, the city stretched for miles. With a large Muslim population, numerous mosques scattered the city. The mosque on the hillside had a mixture of Chinese and Muslim architecture. On the way down, we stopped at a local bauza shop for some lunch. The food along the Silk Road is halal, meaning no pork or alcohol. Before we knew it, it was time to say goodbye to the metropolis. We moved farther west. The city disappeared behind us, and we rose up into the mountains. The mountain city was smaller and quieter. On Friday, thousands of Hui Muslims gathered to worship. After the service, the market opens. Fresh fruit, vegetables, and bread are sold. Next, we went on a drive further up into the mountains. We wanted to see where Islam settled in China, and the first Quran to come to the land. The noodles, rice tomato egg, and yogurt are all famous in this area. And just like that, we were on a sleeper train to our next city. On a 12-hour train, we made our final journey east. We went down from the mountains to the desert, to the eastern city. Like the first city, this city was larger, with a strong mixture of Chinese and Muslim traditions.
Along the Silk Road are five minority Muslim people groups. The largest group is the Hui. This is the Hui Cultural Park. They had shows with traditional music and dance, mosque tours, and a museum about Hui culture. Naan is a staple in the Silk Road diet, as is yogurt drinks. Soon, our trip came to an end. The Silk Road is unlike any place I've ever been. It has a unique style, flair, and a world of different cultures. So if you ever find yourself in that little corner of the world, I recommend you try the egg, tomato, and rice dish. But in all seriousness, I hope you can go and experience the Silk Road for your own. It truly is an amazing place. So go out, go see it. Trust me, it'll be worth it.